Yeah, g'day, it's, uh, it's Charlie again. So, um, as alluded to in the last video, um, let's do a video today on making up the RF amplifier that's on the input of the circuit. So it's going to be running between um, the bandpass filter and the mixer. So what I'm going to do here, this will be for 3.7 megahertz. Um, so I'm not looking for a wide uh, bandwidth amplifier, i.e. I don't need this thing to run at a constant gain between say three and a half megahertz and pick a number 14 megahertz um, so that means I'm not going to bother with any kind of feedback either coming off the collector or in through here on the emitter so the emitter resistor here will be fully bypassed uh, and we'll go from there so in terms of design assumptions I'll be using a, uh, a 2N3904 which we're going to be doing predominantly for um, this build just to keep things nice and simple uh, to work out the beta at my notional 3.7 megahertz, it'll be 300 from the spec sheet divided by 3.7, so that's the frequency in megahertz, gives me a beta of 81. Now, um, the bandpass filter is going to be a 50 ohm output, so I want to look for the input impedance look into here to be um, 50 ohms. Uh, because this is fully bypassed here, we're going to have beta RE in parallel with R1. This is now folded down because of the decoupling uh, capacitor here. So it's going to be R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with beta little RE because RE here is fully bypassed. Um, beta RE will be, uh, well I'll make that to be the smallest value. So as we know with resistors in parallel, the overall resistance um, will be a little bit smaller than the smallest value. So I'm just going to notionally set beta RE to be 50 ohms, noting that little RE is 26 millivolts divided by IE uh, at standard um, temperature. So if we uh, rearrange and um, insert values, so 81 for beta times little RE, which is 26 over IE, equals 50. Solving for IE, I get 42 milliamps. So there I can start to work out the various values. For RE, once again, I'm going to make the voltage at the emitter equal one tenth of VCC. VCC is 12 volts, so here I'll make that 1.2 volts. So 1.2 volts divided by 42 milliamps equals 28 ohms. So I'll we'll use 27 ohms, which is um, the nearest standard value. For R2, that's the bottom of the voltage divider biasing. The voltage across that device is the emitter voltage plus 0.7 for that forward bias junction divided by 10 times the um, base current. Because uh, if you remember, in order to make this voltage divider nice and stiff, as they say, we want to have at least 10 times the base current. So base current's coming out of here. So this one here will have 10 times and then this one will have 10 plus that additional base current will be 11 times. So we can use that logic down here. So 1.2 plus 0.7 divided by 10 times um, IC divided by 81, which is beta, equals 366 and we'll use the nearest value of 390. Now coming back to here um, another rule of thumb is that the emitter current is very is essentially the same as the collector current. Um, technically, there is a base current difference, but that'll be down in microamps. So, for rule of thumb, we can make IE equal IC. Uh, for R1, that's the top uh, resistor there. It's going to be VCC minus the voltage on the base divided by 11 times the base current, so 42 milliamps divided by 81 comes out to be 1771 and for this one I'm just going to use um, 1800 ohms. So moving on to um, the coupling capacitors. Um, we said for the last amplifier that we, we don't want those coupling capacitors to have any more than 100 ohms. Um, 100 ohms at 3.7 megahertz is going to work out to be about 470 odd picofarads. Um, I'm going to use um, the stock standard 100 nanofarad. So that's, uh, if you look at the side of the capacitor, a 104. Uh, it's, it's a very standard sort of value to use. And at 3.7 megahertz, 
noting that xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc, we come out at 0.43 ohms. So that's a big tick there, that's, um, as we'd expect, because 100 nanofarads is significantly larger than 470 picofarads. And because it's on the bottom half of this equation, if capacitance goes up, inductive re um, capacitive reactance goes down. So that's good. Now for the collector load, um, if you look at experiment, uh, experimental methods for RF design, um, there's some good guidance in section 2.7 and you hear it quite often, um, generally a good starting point is to present to the collector of this common emitter um, transistor about 200 ohms. So I'm going to aim to give that 200 ohms and I'm also in my circuit going to, if we look back here, I want to be able to vary the gain coming out of this and I'm going to, be, I'm going to keep it really simple. And I'm going to have coming out of the back here just a 1k ohm variable resistor with our 50 ohm mixer um, sitting on the wiper. Now more often than not, it's going to be on max um, on the max setting. So 50 ohms in parallel with this one with this 1k is going to be overall somewhat just less than 50 ohms. So what we're going to do now is look at the impedance matching here. So what I want to do now with this transformer which I'll base around an FT37-43, is have a suitable turns ratio to step up that 50 ohms to present to the collector 200 ohms. So let's work that one out. So as we said here, we want to have a step up from 50 up to 200. Um, and we know that uh, the equation is um, 50 times the turns ratio squared equals 200 so that means n must equal 4 or n squared equals 4 and therefore n is the square root which is 2 so that's how it's going to be our turns ratio is going to be 2 so now the other rule of thumb we want to do is we want to make sure that the smallest or the the um, the winding which has the least amount of inductive reactants we want to make sure that's at least four times the load impedance. So, and noting that XL equals 2 pi FL, we want to make sure that for that 50 ohm, for that 50 ohm side, that the inductive reactance of this coil here is at least four times 50. So we can solve for that. So if we rearrange this equation here and make inductance the subject, we can say that 4 times 50 divided by 2 pi 3.5 megahertz. Now remember that um, we want this to be true for the lowest frequency. As we go higher in frequency, because it's on the top half, as that goes higher, that goes higher, which makes this better. So we want to work this out at the lowest frequency. So once again, make L the subject, solve for L using 3.5 megahertz gives us an L of essentially 9 microhenries. And if you look at the FT37-43 specs, um, we know that 5 turns on an FT37-43 gives us 9 microhenries. And if you then plug that back into our equa equation up here, we'll get 197 ohms at 3.5 megahertz. So I'm just going to up that by one more turn. So I'm going to make it 6 turns. And we know from up here that our turns ratio is 2, so therefore I need to have a secondary of 12 turns. Um, and that's what it is. So that gives us the, um, the various values for our um, amplifier here. And we've just got some standard decoupling. So we've got a 100 nanofarad capacitor here and a 100 microfarad capacitor here just sitting on the 12 volts. Um, so I think we've talked about that. We've talked about the coupling capacitors. And the bypass here, R1, R2, RE, we've talked about the turns ratio for that FT37-43. And we've got our 1K pop there for the overall sort of gain control, so to speak. So next step now is to put this into LT Spice, and we will um, simulate it, and we'll see how that looks. And then only then, once that um, looks pretty good on LT Spice. Are we going to turn on, or well, I'm going to turn on the soldering iron uh, and actually make the circuit and see how it performs 
um, for real. So hang fire there. Okay, so we've got LT Spice up and running here, and I've got two versions of the circuit. On the right hand side, we have the circuit which has the FT37 43, and on the left hand side, it's exactly the same circuit, but rather than having that 37 43 transformer, I've just got a, a 10 turn. Um, RFC on FT37-43 which happens to uh, to turn out to be 35 microhenries. On the bottom you can see the frequency plots uh, plotting from 1 megahertz through to 100 megs on both sides and as we can see um, the version of the circuit which has the transformer has um, certainly better gain at the highest point. So the highest point here on the right hand side is roughly 2.5 um, megs and if we were to come down to uh, 3.7 megs which is roughly there and coming up a tad we are getting um, if you can see on the bottom left hand corner if it's on the screen um, is 43 um, dB and on the left hand circuit similarly if you click on that um, 3.7 uh, which is about there is 32 so quite a quite a difference here so I'm going to um, stick with um, the right hand circuit um, I had to play around with the left hand one with different values of the um, inductor just for interest sake and I certainly was getting the same amount of performance now if we just concentrate on the right hand circuit here um, the way in which I've decided to look at the, um, the variable or the potentiometer is to have it split, um, noting that the wiper here is for the um, has a 50 ohm sitting on it, and I'm just sort of simulating it being on max gain, so one ohm on top and 999 on the bottom, and then by varying those, I can look at the effect on the circuit itself. Um, I'll do it. I've done another video in the past which looks at how to do the simulations here um, because you can look at um, the transient response um, as well as the AC analysis which is what we're looking at here um, where you can look at um, how the actual signal is performing right so um, I don't think there's too much to say here, uh, just the, the the source here, I set it one microvolt, noting that you know, this is on the front end of the amplifier, uh, of the circuit I should say, the radio, so I'm just sort of acknowledging that it's quite a weak signal coming through, um, it'd be notionally uh, higher than that, but um, that's certainly quite small, at 3.7 uh, megahertz. And um, all those values here you can see are the same values that we worked out in the um, in the uh, the paper uh, calculations and the transformer up here um, for LT spice you need to convert the 12 turns and 6 turns into um, inductance which turns out to be 15.4 microhenries and 12.6 microhenries respectively and then up here you just give it a coupling factor um, one is pretty generous um, in, in real world you wouldn't get uh, a, a coupling coefficient of one um, but I'm trying to get an idea of of how this is going to perform um, and also by doing comparisons as long as everything's equal then um, I'm going to get a good idea so I'm not going to expect when I do the actual measurements that I'm going to get um, what I say before sort of 42 odd dB I think that's unrealistic but it's a, it's a good it gives you a good idea of how things are most likely going to perform so at this point in time um, I'm happy with um, how the calculations came out um, something I didn't mention before um, I did it but I didn't actually write it down uh, we have um, roughly 48 um, milliamps flowing through this emitter resistor uh, on paper we had 42 um, you just need to work out the I squared R so if you, the, the power dissipation of your emitter resistor there just to make sure you got the right size um, so if we, if we go with 48 milliamps which is here we're getting a dissipation of 65 milliwatts so a, um, a quarter watt resistor will be fine for that anyway so uh, it's time now to turn the soldering iron on 
and melt some solder and we'll break here and then we'll have the circuit made up and then we'll do some actual measurements okay so um, the circuits now built up and we've got it on the board and we'll just look now to do some some checks with a, uh, a function generator and using the oscilloscope to see what's coming out so at the moment the way it's been wired up is we have the input aerial coming in going straight to the input of the amplifier and then the output of the, the pot is going through and it's going down here to our switch which is basically switching that incoming RF between the SBL1 and the homebrew mixer so we just pan out a little bit more we'll just get the oscilloscope in there so at the moment that's on channel 1 and channel 1 is uh, the input so that's going from the SIG gen through a switched attenuator and we've currently got sitting there uh, 2.5 divisions at maximum here is 5 millivolts per division by the minus 3 times um, and the output if we go back to channel 2 so channel 2 is now the output and as we can see here if I vary the, the volume you can see that going up and down and we've currently got there 2.2 uh, divisions at 0.5 volts per division so if we do the maths on that 20 log V out over V in um, that gives us a straight voltage gain of 88 and if we take the log of that 20 times gives us 38.88 let's call that 39 dB which is quite close to the 40 odd dB that um, LT Spice was kicking out um, so that's not too bad and as you can see there the effect of the volume control uh, just logging that up and down so all in all um, that's pretty good actually so I'm quite happy with that um, next steps now will be to um, build up the band pass filter and we'll insert that between the antenna and that amplifier there just to give us some pre-selection before going into the main radio so there you go um, thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for the next one cheers all